to everybody. What do you want us to share? Divine knowledge. Huh? Divine knowledge. <laughs> and good blessing. <coughs> Normally when we say divine knowledge, something connected with the spirit. Spirit is always identified as the divine, Atman. What is spirit? The power because of which these words are now coming. The power because of which the eyes are seeing now, ears are hearing now. That which enlivens all our organs of perception and actions. About which we are not aware. Right from our impressionable age, we have been acting, reacting, proacting, you know, based upon what we receive from the sense, of, sense or, uh, objects through our sense organs. In this heavy traffic, we hardly recognize the spirit within us. which is the common thread in every creation. That which is the life force. Every individual is now thinking, talking and doing only because of the presence of this spirit in us, which is the common denominator in every creation, more conspicuously felt in human beings. <coughs> So every master who uh, <coughs> was prompted from within to do some research on this and each one has arrived at the destination in their own unique way because each creation is unique and therefore each one's method has also to be unique. That is why you see in India, there are so many Mahatmas. But all of them have pointed out only on this spirit. Their expression, their term, terminologies, that might differ. But everyone finally reaches the central point of identifying the common denominator in every creation, which is what is called the spirit. Anything connected with the spirit is called spiritual. Normally, when the moment we get up in the morning, all our sense organs are active and they try to identify the sense objects and we carry on with it. There has not been any in-depth study about the spirit within us. Though right from childhood, we have some disciplines, go to the puja room, there will be an image, image of a Ishta Devata, chosen deity, or a guru. And right from our childhood, we have been initiated by our elders to prostrate, to offer our worship. And then we carry on with our life. There has not been any uh, conscious effort on our part to link that with our day-to-day -day activities. Unknowingly and unwittingly, we have kept it a separate compartment. Something about God or spirit, when we go to the temple, when we go to ashram, when we have satsang, when we have discourses, when we take to swadhyay, studies of scriptures, at that time, we have fully engaged. But the moment that is over, the other life, we treat it as another compartment. But a, a deeper study of the spiritual science, now there are two science, material science and spiritual science. 
a deeper study of this will reveal that this spirit is needed throughout our activities, at home, in the office, with friends, family life, professional life, social life, which we come to know only when we get in touch with the spiritual preceptor. Until such time, we are not aware. We feel some joy when we go to the puja room, when we go to a temple, when we take part in some festivities, some when we meet a guru. All those things give us some joy, no doubt, an inexplicable joy, not an ordinary joy, inexplicable joy. But the moment we come out of it, we don't stretch that to any of our activities, because we have not been told. We thought it is separate. Leading a family life, leading a professional life, leading a social life. So here comes the role of a spiritual guru. And he says that spiritual knowledge will, or divine knowledge will help us to improve the quality of our life. There are two standards, you know, standard of life and standard of living. You, you, we improve our standard of living through material knowledge. At the same time, we improve our standard of life through spiritual knowledge. So both should go hand in hand. Mm. As uh, Swamiji said, we come from Ananda Ashram, which was uh, started in 1931 by Master Parampuja Swami Ramdas endearingly called by devotees as Beloved Papa. Beloved Papa and Pooja Mataji, Mataji Krishnabhai, who was the first and foremost disciple. So at the time of inauguration, he made it clear that the ideal of the ashram is universal love and service based upon the vision of divinity in everybody. This divine knowledge. That which is common in all of us. Not a social service. Suppose you speak uh, Gujarati, for example. When you go to an interior village and somebody talks Kejo, immediately you will ask where from you are coming, you know. That which is common develops the affinity between us. So we have been told by Shastras and Masters that there is something common in all of us and along with whatever activities we are doing, there will be a conscious effort on our part to identify this common thread. We are all involved in that activity only, but we are not aware. Even in our family life or professional life or social life, we are trying to stretch ourselves. We may not know that. So divine knowledge is something by which you know, we try to understand the common thread in all of us. And various paths have been prescribed. And in Ananda Ashram, Papa placed before us a triune path. Nam, Seva, Dhyan. We give a name to this common denominator. Any name we are comfortable with. Because nobody need teach us that there should be a, a there should be a power in us, which is the one which is making us to see through our eyes, hear through our ears, taste through our tongue, smell through our nose, and touch through our skin. We also know that we need a mind and intellect to think. But all these things are there only when the life principle is there. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord says, Jeevanam Sarva Bhudeshu. I am there in everybody as the life force. Papa used to say, life is the expression of Atman, spirit. So we all now know that the life is there in us. No? Nobody need teach us. About which we are not aware. That is the mystery of it. We take everything as granted, we carry on with our life's activities, 
but hardly recognizing this life force in us, which is there in everybody. So the Nama is that part. Give a name to that part, life force, because it is intangible, not palpable, it can't be shown. For example, that with which you see now, through your eyes, that cannot be seen with your eyes, is it not? The power behind the seeing cannot be seen with the eyes. Start, just start thinking. So since it has, it cannot be, it cannot be, it cannot be an object. Because it is a very subject, you know. So we give a name to that and then repeat that to remember that. So in Anandashram, Ram is the name given for this power. And he defines what this Ram is. Ram is the subtle and mysterious power, which is in all of us. Not only in human beings, in all plant kingdom, animal kingdom, inert, insentient matters also, everything. So we give a name and Ram stands for that. Any name. Suppose we have been uh, uh, praying to Lord Vishnu, Narayana, Om Namo Bhagavadya Nama, any, any name, Om Namah Shivaya. Anything we are comfortable with, because we don't have to change it. The only thing is, previously we were identifying it only on a, on an, on a Ishta Devada. Now we are trying to see that it stands for this. And we chant. Chanting to remember him. That is very important. Initially when we chant, we will get some inexplicable joy out of it. But later on it will slip into a superficial activity, lip level activity, ritualistic activity. In order to ensure that this name is a link between us and him who is within us, we need to do some preparatory measures. You might be watching that when, whenever we want to raise a crop, you know, paddy or anything, we cannot simply throw the soap seed there. We have to prepare the ground. First we till the soil, make it loose, apply mulch, cattle manure, water will be there. The whole thing gets blended into one. And then you sow the seed. So that as soon as the sowing is done, in another 10 days or 15 days, it sprouts. The seed breaks. And when it breaks, if it is a loose surface, it can easily penetrate on a, on a rough ground. It may not. It will die. So similarly, some preparatory measure also has to be done to make the Nama chanting more effective. What is that? Nobody will be able to chant the name throughout the waking state. Though we intellectually accept that without life we don't exist. Without life we cannot lead a family life or professional life or social life. Though we know that, we will not be able to remember that throughout our waking state because of our preoccupations. The priorities and preferences we have given. It is not possible. It is intellectually agreed. But so what do we do? So there, Papa says, whatever outer activities are there, it should be compatible with our inner aspiration. Inner aspiration means to remember Him. So right from the moment I get up from the morning, from the bed, till I retire to bed, I sh there should be a conscious effort on our part to remember, to remember, to remember. There could be so many methods. One method could be that the moment we get up, you know, from our sleep, from our bed, we remember the bed. When there is no bed in the world, 
somebody got you know the idea to have a something like bed we what we call now a cot a bed spread a pillow here of course the rajai the construction electricity so we start thing when it was not there i am enjoying it no i don't know the other i am wearing this i don't know the first person who conceived it dress when there was no dress in the world i don't know the person who conceived a sofa when there was no sofa in the world like that each and every item we try to go to the source remember this because the person who has to discover invent or innovate needs life you know which is there in us so to remember that life we are trying to go through this discovery invention and innovation which has been helping us to lead a comfortable life including the language when there is no language in the world <coughs> a to z you know yes, english for example what a great thing he has given to us do we remember <coughs> which we need right from the moment we get up till we retire you know that is the one which is helping us to communicate to connect with others like that anything when we take the brush the paste the soap the wash basin the commode the eatables anything we try to go to the source and try to remember and so when we handle that there will be a touch of love not like this we keep it we try to recognize it we slowly try to recognize that there is nothing that is irrelevant or unimportant or insignificant tomorrow when we use this for washing we will not throw it you know when we take the brush after cleaning it and keeping it there will be a an implied gratitude no it has helped us to clean our this thing slowly we develop that means the spirit the, spirit, the divine knowledge is entering into us through everything that we transact in the world outside it is not to be limited to a particular time or a particular discipline and of course we, as we are not used to it we may forget this nama reminds us suppose anything we do in a slip shot irregular half hearted way nama will immediately remind hey what are you doing man suppose we throw something we keep the chap suppose the chappal is to be there when there is no chappal sandal when there is no socks when there is no dress uh, specs it was given to us everything that we use suddenly we start remembering any in who those who have authored this those who have produced this those who have brought this into being never specified the beneficiary we also try to understand mother nature now especially after the covid everybody will be knowing it but during covid period those who are affected they were struggling for breathing you know and they were paying through their nose for oxygen we hardly recognize that every day the air is providing to bring in the oxygen inside and to take out the excess of carbon dioxide without our knowing we did not do anything for the air we did not nor did we do anything for the water we drink Yesterday we were sharing. Now the scientists have proved that water is nothing but H two O. But we did not get water because of this combination of hydrogen two and one oxygen. No. That unknown power has already provided all these things to us. The air we breathe, the water we drink, the earth on which we stand, the space in which we move about. 
and of course the 98.4 degree temperature that keeps us alive which is called which is a symptom of life force the sun rains metals minerals gases vegetables we don't know the first what is vegetable here potato eh potato potato first potato how did it come chapo we are making chapati first wheat first paddy first beans first tuvarada we don't know that everything has been provided to us we are enjoying it we take everything as granted now when we start doing it when something is served to us we need not tom tom in our mind so nama chanting should accompany with this is called seva at home when i go to the field of profession that particular line was not developed by us anything that you take suppose you are in business you are trading you know somebody is producing there is a manufacturer there is a consumer and we are the conduit pipe you know? suppose we are the manufacturers the first concept should come to somebody you know and for that life is necessary it cannot just come from the sky like that wherever we are so we are also doing that and to us in the business language customer is right always okay but that is okay in the vyavaharic language but a spiritual divine knowledge will help us to know that we are reaching out to the consumer he is he is in need of it we are trying to get it from the manufacturer passing it on to him if you are a manufacturer you are your ultimate aim is to reach out to the consumer through a trader of course like that any profession whether you are a lawyer or a doctor or a chartered accountant you just take that you are reaching out to his creation this is how we are paying back and in the process we get some remuneration profit or something like that but ultimately every one of us knowingly or unknowingly are trying to reach out to the creation just as people who have discovered or invented or innovated are reaching out to us we don't know the other so papa do says in one of his quotation unless you link with the other of your being your life is in vain because neither the mother nature like air water no space earth and the society none of them specified the beneficiary so how can i think about only me and mine so divine knowledge enables us to expand from me to we and every because we are we are not been told we have not trained our mind in that equipment body mind and equipment in that fashion it is a tough job for us to bring in this dimension in all that we think in all that we talk in all that we do so some discipline there there in lies the importance of this nama so nama is not to be nama chanting is not to be limited to a particular time or a particular place right from the moment we get up till we retire to bed whenever there is an opportunity for us to remember him we remember him you have you have written to somebody somebody is sending you a payment or whatever an important letter agreement or something it is sent by courier you get it neck cover as soon as you get the cover you open it you put it in the waste paper basket is it not it has to go to the waste paper basket only but previously we were not recognizing it now divine knowledge will help us to know that it has done its job it has preserved that precious letter right from the sender's hand till it reaches your hand it has done its job so you will not throw anything and everything you know so whenever i do that if i have developed chanting the name with this background this nama will something you know something it will serve something like a sentinel a watchdog 
whenever I go off the line, what are you doing? Immediately it pulls you back, puts you on the rail. That is why Nama is given so much of importance. It has got everything to do with our very life. So, initially, we may have five minutes or ten minutes in the morning, then go back. But then, during the whole sixteen hours of our, sixteen or seventeen hours of our uh, waking state, whenever it is possible, Papa use, uses the word, even the period ever so small, you are getting up and going to your car, to open the car. You get a few seconds, you can chant that. When there is no car in the world, automobile in the world, you made somebody to bring it, that is why I am using it. Om Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, get into it. When you are sitting in the dining table, so many things are brought. When there is no chapati in the world, when there is no sabji in the world, you made somebody to think about it. Need not tom tom. So we try to bring in this God dimension, this divine knowledge, right from the moment we get up till we retire, because that is the only period where the uh, conscious activities are going on. So divine knowledge is not something which is apart from us. It is inherent in us. And the more we try to know about it, the quality of our life gets improved. In the sense what? Nobody is irrelevant, nobody is unimportant, nobody is insignificant. Nothing is irrelevant, nothing is unimportant, nothing is insignificant. Everywhere we will have a touch of love, a touch of perfection, a touch of dedication, a touch of gratitude. Just think about it. In your family life, in your professional life, social life. These are the three tires through which we express ourselves. Early morning when we get up, we are a part of the family. When we move to the field of profession, we become a professional being. When we are with our friends, we are a social being. So in these three tires of life, right from morning, we get up till we retire. Suppose we try to bring in this divine knowledge concept. It's a beautiful word. That is why, you know, he prompted you to bring it up. Anything you add, this page, that's all. A dimension. That's all. Nothing. Else. How it will improve the quality? We can see that. Our relationship, you know. Relationship becomes harmonious. Because we are never at home in the office or so. We meet with a lot of challenges, duties to perform, commitment to be honoured, so many things are going on. Something which we would not have thought about, if something arises. So how do we in react to events and individuals? Whether we do it at an impulsive level or with this divine knowledge level. Suppose somebody differs on a particular issue with us, we will not jump and say that. No? Immediately we know the spirit is there in him, something, so there must be some reason. You, there's a past moment. We try to recognize, you know. Whatever he prompts from us, we hold on to it. But slowly, unknowingly, unwittingly, the sense of doership, you know, the me and mine, it gets slowly tapered. Taper. Because when we start recognizing the relevance of anything and everything, not holding on to our rights and wrongs, not asserting our viewpoints, we will find the slowly the me and mine get slowly diluted. We also try to accommodate, no? This is how the quality of life improves. Prior to joining Ashram, we were working in a coffee plantation. <coughs> the proprietor is a very noble person. He had also set up a charitable trust and set up a property for that. Whatever profit that comes from that coffee plantation of that particular area, that will be 
appropriated to the needy, poor and needy segment. The his estate when where he was there, it is about nearly three kilometers from the main road, upward incline. So we joined him in 1969. So his son, who was also 22, 23 years old at that time, every day he also they are Jains. They religiously follow their system. So we were all in the office. The proprietor was sitting, noble person. Somebody came there for some assistance. So he said. Are you a vegetarian? Do you take to any drinks? What are you working? All those things. So his son was coming, hearing this. He has great respect for his father, very great regard. But at the same time, he felt not comfortable with these questions. They have come all the way, you know, walking three kilometers, and you are asking these questions. So he said in Malayalam. Just made a comment, looking at us, not looking at his father. If you feel like giving, give. Why he ask you these questions? And he went away. The father looked at him. We were watching the scene. Father looked at him. Immediately told us, give him fifty rupees, take a voucher, sixty-nine. Why we are recollecting? You know, each one is. Why should he shut up? He has set up this thousand acres of plantation. And he has given to his children, and then he has set up this trust, and he is doing charitable work by himself. He is a selfless man, Gandhian, noble person, but ego did not come there. So the the family level, how this divine knowledge helps. Before that, we were working in a company also. You must have heard of Bosch, no? At that time, it was called Myco. In So we were in the sales department. One day we received a letter from the sales representative saying that uh, our competitor's product is conspicuously kept in the showroom and the showroom. Yeah. So he said uh, immediately we drafted a letter. This is unethical. When you are an authorized dealer, you are not supposed to do this. It sets a bad precedent. This and that, you know, so many things. We drafted the letter. The draft goes to the assistant manager before it gets typed. On those days, there was no computer. He called us to his cabin. He said, "Why did you think that he has deliberately done?" <coughs> no, sir. It cannot be. It sets a bad precedent. We should not do that. He said, "Okay, okay. You are right. I agree." But in business, customer is always right. And why should you prejudge? He has ordered for the parts to us. We were not able to immediately send. So a customer comes. He is on the road. He has to meet with the customer. He cannot say my principals have not sent. So he has to immediately get the parts, either the competitor or somebody, and meet his demand. And instead of buying one or two, he would have bought three or four. After giving one or two, he would have kept it, unknowingly, unwittingly, in a price which is conspicuous. So, So why should we think that he has deliberately done? Now you do one thing. You go back, think about it. If you think still that this letter can go, send it to me. I will sign. Went back. Correct. It can happen. Every time when they place the order, we may not be able to immediately supply. We have to get it from head office. And there are so many procedures behind it. In the process, you know, it might get delayed. At the same time, a man who is with the vehicle, you know, Bosch at that time, our spare parts was fuel injection equipment. It is the heart of the engine. Suppose he is there on the streets, and he comes there. Then my principals have not sent. I, if I say that, I am losing the customer. I am not serving him properly. It sends a bad message in the market. You may please sit down. He sends somebody to the competitor, brings that, gives him, satisfies him. We thought yes, it could happen. So we redrafted the letter and informed him. 
probably out of uh, compelling circumstances this would have happened but uh, kindly ensure that it doesn't happen because it sets a bad precedent so when we drafted the letter manager called and said are you satisfied yes i think so. acha we send the letter in one week's time a letter came so apologizing he explained the same thing however he also added i am not justifying my action but this is how it had happened we will ensure that recurrence of this nature will be avoided when the letter came he called now see that when that means accommodating we try to put ourselves on somebody's shoes try to this is divine knowledge so family life professional life and social life the one one good friend whom we used to consult for our labor disputes very close friend he does it only purely because of the friendship nothing else he doesn't charge us he doesn't ask any favor very close friend one day when we met him at the town he was very much depressed so he said uh, our jain no i think he has also become top heavy no 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 it's not like that no i he was traveling he was uh, riding the uh, jeep i looked at him he looked at me i wished him he did not wish it cannot happen do you think i will tell lie no i know i don't think i immediately took the two wheeler rushed to the estate and he was there i told him when somebody greets you should you not recommend yes i should do you have not done it it has offended somebody immediately we both of us got into the jeep went to that person he was in his quarters as soon as he went you know this proprietor with whom we were working he immediately did this in malayalam he said please pardon me you know the other man came and hugged him why did i find fault with you i don't know forget about it we, we let us have a cup of coffee now so many other things discussed came out so when going back i was telling him you did not utter a word about the incident he said this is very important friendship is more important than our rights and wrongs he has every reason i may have a reason but he got the the truth is he got offended and we are going there to repair it you know why post mortem so in the social life so how does this divine knowledge help us to have a harmonious family life a conscientious professional life and a sensitive social life for all that we try to accommodate others you know because everything everything reminds us whether it is a glass whether it is a lid whether it is the water whether it is the stand everything reminds us i have not brought anything when i came out from my mother's womb everything has been provided to me either through mother nature or through society so to keep us on this track i need this nama so we can say you know in the computer language nama is the password by which we enter into our active life <clears throat> it keeps us on check whenever i go off the line so it depends upon how earnestly we chant you know it is not a lip level activity it is a conscious effort on our part to link ourselves with the great provider with the source from which all of us have come who is now living in us who is making us to express as an individual we have attended many obituary you know that whenever we here we go to there we see that the same body is there but not acting you know so that which enliven that which activate that which propels the body mind and recruitment that whose name we are chanting and not to be limited to life force later on we will find apart from life force is also the awareness or consciousness we also name it as intelligence anything that has come first we should have a concept you know 
The concept comes from the primordial intelligence. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord says, not only that I am the Bijam of everything, Bijam Maam Sarva Bhutanam, I am the eternal seed of everything, but also the Buddhir Buddhi Vadamasmi, I am the intelligence of the intellect. So to know about this is divine knowledge. It is not something that is different from our common run of life. It has got everything to do right from the moment you start functioning as an individual till you retire to bed. Any name. So this is how, uh, this is what is going on. So of the three, and dhyana is also there. Nama, whatever we explain it, is seva. And dhyana is to feel this presence, you know. There should be some time for us to know what this uh, life force is. We, anyone, everybody can choose their own paths. Suppose we close our eyes. We can try that even now, if all of you feel like. You can close your eyes and uh, watch, count six times of your breathing. Shall we try? Yeah. Ah. Six times. Hari Om. Mm -hmm. What was your experience? Tell us. <coughs> when you counted, at that time what happened? Anybody can say. When somebody, yes, tell me. The thoughts of God. Huh? Thought of God. God, very good. Then? <coughs> then, anything else? You could hear around the sounds while you're trying to count those hmm? or chant. You could hear the sounds around the hall. You, should, you were able to hear. The you were, sounds. You were counting, you know? Yes, counting. Oh. But if your mind still could... Your ears. Ah. Okay. Then, anything else? An awareness. You? Hmm? Yeah. There was an awareness. Yeah. There was an awareness. Yeah. Then? You go deeper. Eh? Deeper. You go deeper. Mm. Then? Calm. Anything else? Calmness, they said. Calmness. Then? Become focused. Focused. Watch. Watchful. Anything else? Watchful. Eh? Watchful. Watchfulness? Yes. Everything is right. Your breath became deeper, slower. Eh? Breath. <coughs> breath became deeper. deeper. Breath became deeper. Slower. Yeah. Then I went past seven. Anything else? You become peaceful. Concentration is there. Huh? Concentration, Concentration is better. Concentration, good. Anything else? Because you do need consciously, your awareness is there. Ah. Awareness. You are aware of the breathing, no? Yes. During our other times, we may not be even aware of our breathing. <coughs> Think. With, without breathing, Bereft of beating, we will not exist. But about which we are not aware during our active life. So that itself will give us some idea. Take any example. This is one example. 
one example for six times, you know, hardly it would have taken a few seconds or less than a minute. And in that period, we try to recognize the enlivening principle in us, about which we are not aware, about which we hardly recognize or worship or, you know, without which I don't as an individual exist at all. <clears throat> so we can choose any method. This is called dhyana. Any method by which, because throughout you cannot sit, <coughs> but when you get, just like when, when, we, when you are learning the cycling, so many times we fall, we get bruises, but then later on you get the balance one day. Balance is not coming from outside. Yeah, it is coming from inside. And once you get it, you will not lose it. You expand your consciousness, actually. Exactly. Ultimately, it will lead to the consciousness. Yes. Everybody is expressing awareness, everything in awareness. So the life force expresses in the form of awareness. When you are looking at me, you know that you are looking at me. You know that you are hearing. You know that you are sitting. You know that you are. <coughs> Which is what is called awareness or consciousness, absolute. So this life force expresses in the form of consciousness also. Chetana. So divine knowledge. We are trying to now get it one small, what do you call that? Uh, in a microscopic way, we are trying to understand. And as we keep on doing it, so many things will get revealed in us, in our own way. <coughs> so in order to ensure the link just like, you know, we tried through breathing. We are also trying through chanting. Through the breathing, we become aware how vital it is. So the, that principle is being reminded to us through chanting. And since it has no name and form, this life force, and since you and I have got name and form, it is difficult to conceive something which is not having any name and form. So our ancestors must have planned that uh, a human being can understand only through another human being. So we need various forms. So that could have been the origin for our Itihasas and Puranas. and the avatars. And so, a human dimension has been given to this. So that it's easy for us to connect ourselves. And right from our impressionable age, we developed that. Previously, we were thinking, when we see Lord Krishna, we were limiting ourselves to that form. With this divine knowledge, we will try to connect this common denominator through that form. So, worshipping a form will ultimately enable us to get ourselves connected with the formless, which is there in all. So holding on to the form, not that we should stop it, no. Now as we enter, Lord Vinayaka is there. So the, any activity when we start, there could be a few hurdles, you know, obstructions. So we must pray to that power to remove all this, which is symbolized through Lord Ganesha. We call him Vigneshwara, you know. Vigna means hurdles, to cross over that hurdle, anything. Suppose we start a, we would like to have a factory, we would like to have a building. Normally in India, there is a puja there. Ganapati Homam, they say. To invoke his blessings, so that everything should go. You have given us a prompting. 
you you have provided the wherewithal you make us to in, in please don't bring any obstructions you have given a prompting and that let that concept become a reality so we are prostrating so when we whenever we happen to go through a go, see a ganeshas like that each chosen deity is symbolically representing this ideal so revering that ideal the only thing is we previously we were limiting to that now we will not limit it is represented through that particular form god gave us an opportunity to develop devotion and subservience to a form very good now so far we have been limiting to that now we try to see that he is there in everybody we were telling us in bhagavad gita he says that samam sarveshu budeshu i am there in everybody equally who says lord krishna says so when we go shastras help us to know this principle so we try to identify that through that form no not whether through form or through direct not it, it depend upon, upon depends upon our taste temperament aptitude inclination our mindset which we have got it from our previous birth so everything is valid nothing is invalid so in ashram simple method is nama any name so there we have got a ram nam bank also people write ram nam and send the books it is not just kept like a library with all that is required you know it will be packed it will be counted something will be added and uh, even now <laughs> mata ji is uh, it started from mata ji centenary that means uh, 54 1954 just you can imagine 46 plus 24 70 years now and the ramna bank has been fully filled so we have to have an extension counter and then <laughs> that is our deposit you know nothing else ashram does not papa did not believe in corpus or anything only the ram nam bank and morning to evening chanting is going on that is one of the main activity of the ashram so that people when they come stay for one or two or three or four <coughs> days and uh, even to come there there is no other low profile ashram then they hear through word of mouth and now, now some devotees have uh, put this website or something like that so people when we go through they write to us through email they come stay for two or three or four days as soon as they come you know they will be hearing this ram nam set to a melodious tune so morning uh, there are three samadhi mandirs papa mata ji and later on puja swami sachidanand ji who joined the ashram in 1949 who served papa for 14 years served mata ji for 40 years and when mata ji dropped to the body he became our spiritual head and the source of perennial inspiration these tri- trinities we call them. in their samadhis alternate every day uh, from morning 6 to evening 6 half an hour gents half an hour ladies they keep on chanting and in the main shrine we have program from 5 o'clock in the morning till uh, 12:45 1 o'clock the forenoon session evening again evening we start it goes on to 9:30 we have satsang every alternative days so through this you know nobody will be told to do anything these are all made available facilitate the theme is this the ideal universal love and service based upon the vision of divinity in everybody we don't have to run away from any field all fields have been given by him the only thing is we try to bring in this dimension there that's all he has given us this vocation seated inside in the form of life force he has prompted us to involve ourselves as a family person as a professional person as a social person so we are discharging the duties assigned to us by him always we try to remember through chanting These are all some of the thoughts which came up when you asked for divine knowledge. <laughs>
Anything else? Anyone want to ask? Any other question? In the south, there is more Shiv Bhaktas. South, Gujarat is Krishna. In the south, it is more of Shiva Bhaktas and in the Gujarat, Gujarat it is more of Krishna. Krishna. Huh. And in between Bihar and Maharashtra and that, <coughs> that is Ganapati uh, Utsav. Maharashtra. Now, you have started in south a uh, Ram now. Very now. Is it okay that okay. They, Everything uh, is okay. People get used to it. No, no. The only start. thing is, suppose when we go to ashram, we go around with that. Whatever we do it, we hold on to it. We can also have five minutes of Shivanam here. All of you can join. Om Namah Shivaya, 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 Om Namah Shivaya.